Hey everyone, uh, my name is Blake and I'm here with Chris and today we're going to be talking about all of the different light bars, pods, pretty much everything that you need to know or want to know when looking to purchase uh, LEDs for your vehicle, boat, ATV, anything. Uh, we're going to kind of go through all that today. Welcome to the new Cali Raised Adventure Series. We're going to be doing videos every week. We can't wait to see you more. So Blake, uh, tell us about the different pods that we have here and some of the options you can choose from. Yeah, so with our LEDs, we have a pretty wide uh, selection. Um, the thing about the LEDs is people say like, what light bar do I need? It all depends where you're mounting it, um, how, much, how much room you have. Uh, we manufacture a lot of like vehicle specific kits that'll say like, oh, this holds a 32 inch light bar, this holds this pod, that pod and whatnot. Um, but it just depends if you're mounting it on your boat and you got 23 inches of open open space in the front, you're going to put the 22 inch bar up there. Um, so it just depends kind of on where you're looking to put it, how big you can fit, um, and where. We have thinner single row bars if you're trying to keep a low pro, not stick up as much. Um, we have the little cube pods for if you're trying to fit them in smaller areas. It just depends on your um, individual application, what you're looking to do with your lights. Um, and it just is where, where you're going to want to put them is where it is at the end of the day um, to what you're going to be able to fit. It. Um, we have some other options for um, as far as sizes. We start at seven and a half inches and then we go up to 52 inches. Um, starting at a 42 inch, we have a curved model. So on a 42 and a 52, you can get a bar that has a radius. Um, the radius bar works really good if you're mounting it up on like the windshield of like a truck or a boat or like a side by side because they have a radius windshield on them. So it kind of follows the radius really well. And then for color wise all of our light bars are just in a 6000k pure white um, with our osram leds pods uh, we use uh, white as well but we do have an amber option um, so we do have right here this is a, a 3 by 2 18 watt uh, amber pod so you can get these pods in an amber as well if you do choose to do that um, another option for a pod we have is our side projecting pod that light works really good because not only do you get light straight ahead of you but you get light off to the side as well so they come as a set you get a driver and a passenger side and it gives you 180 degrees of light coverage all the lights come with the mounting brackets and hardware as well um, so they all come with universal uh, mounting brackets and hardware where you can pretty much bolt the light to anything yeah um, it's just a common L bracket yeah and on top of that we do sell uh, vehicle specific um, items as well for certain mounting applications but for a lot of your boats, side-by-sides, farming equipment, heavy equipment, stuff like that, you're going to be able to use the hardware we provide for you. Um, aftermarket bumpers, stuff like that, they'll usually have pre-made tabs on them, so you can pretty much just bolt them right up. So they're pretty easy to mount, and then with that wiring harness we give you, the wiring's a breeze, so this is something you don't have to pay a shop to install. You can pretty much do it from home. Yeah, and speaking a little bit about pods and light bars and placement, there's really a different, it's kind of like a toolbox full of sockets and wrenches. You have a different light for a different application. Uh, looking at our side shooter pods here, these are going to be an ideal, po an ideal pod for a ditch bracket or somewhere in a similar place where you're trying to get a big fan of light. Another great thing about these is in the center, that's why there's a driver and passenger. It actually blocks out the light from hitting your hood. So you're not gonna get that nasty hood glare. You're not gonna get blinded by something that you're trying to increase your vision on. If you're going for something below the headlights, that's when we really get into the cubes. They have a very different reflector in there, a different housing. They're creating a much more flood fog light pattern. Once you get above the hood and the ditch mounts, then you're talking light bars and you want all the light you can get. You're talking 52 inch curves, 42 inch straight bars. When you're up that high on the vehicle, it's all about getting that light as far out in front of you as you can. 
usually when we talk about light philosophy, when you start at the top of the car, you're talking distance. As you move down towards the ground, you're talking more flood around on the ground. So that's why you'll see guys putting the big 52 inch bars on the roof or the 40 inch bars on the roof racks. And then as you get down to the pods and down onto the bumper, it becomes more of a flood based lighting plan, getting you all the way down to the ground. Getting deeper into the lights and the specifics, uh, one question that we deal with all the time is moisture in the light. And any LED, no matter who the manufacturer is, you're always gonna experience a little bit of moisture. It's just how our world works. When you build these LEDs, they're not in an air vacuum. They're in the regular atmosphere, just like we're in right now. And there's moisture in the air. And yes, this is a sealed light and it gets all put together, but there's moisture in there. Now, as, as Blake has talked about before, we see temperature differences. The temperature inside this sealed housing is gonna be very different than your ambient temperature in the afternoon or as the sun goes up and goes down. So you're gonna see temperature differences that are gonna cause moisture. But the question is, how do you handle the moisture? Not, is there moisture? Because every light is gonna have moisture. Blake, why don't you hit on how we handle the moisture here? Yeah, so with the lights, there's two different kinds of moisture. You have condensation and then you have water intrusion. Water intrusion is where there is a break in the seal and actual water is getting into your light. That's a problem uh, that would need to be addressed because these lights are IP68 rated. They are waterproof. Uh, IP68 is uh, fully submergible, um, three meters for uh, 30 minutes. So if there's actual water intrusion, that means water is puddling in the light and there is a break in the seal somewhere. That's a warranty issue. Yeah, that's that a problem. But yeah. uh, when you get condensation, um, that could be just like in the morning when you go out to your vehicle and your windshield um, has water on the inside of it. And as you start driving and it warms up, it goes away. Um, so to handle that, just like how you would in a vehicle, we have a vent on these lights. So this gore vent um, allows the pressure and the temperature to equalize between the outside temperature and what's inside this light. So typically you might see a little fog in a light in the morning, but then it, uh, as the day goes on and it, the temperature uh, equalizes, it will work itself out of the light. Blake, a lot of our customers ask, should I choose a spot beam or a combo beam? What do you think about that? Just depends on what you're gonna be using the light for. Personally, from what we see and from use, combo beam is the most popular. It's just a nice overall throw of light. If you're um, not sure, that's the way to go. Yeah, definitely. If, if you're gonna add one light bar on your vehicle, go with a combo beam. If you're gonna be adding a light bar pods, all, you know, multiple different items, then you might wanna mix in a spot beam. If you got ditch lights that are covering your side to side area, your light bar, I would go with a spot because your ditch lights are gonna light up kind of your blood areas. Um, so this light's gonna give you a really good distance. So what it sounds like is you're telling me you gotta plan ahead a little bit. Yeah, it's and it's just kind of what your personal preference is. If I'm putting a light bar on my truck and it's the only light and I got it down in the bumper, I'm gonna go with a combo beam because when I flip that thing on going down the road at night, I wanna see way out in front of me, but I also wanna see on the sides um, as well. And I don't have any other lights that are gonna cover those sides, so this is my only light, um, so I'm gonna do that. 